Hello, my name is Ryan. I am the lead technician of the signature line here at ECD Automotive. I'm gonna give a little demonstration of our first electric defender, some basics on operating and some other technical points. So with your defender, you do get a key, just like any other vehicle. The defenders, the keys are on the left-hand side of the column. You put the key in, you'll turn it to on. Now you see everything wakes up, but the electric drive is still asleep. So we're going to hit the start cycle on the key, just like you would if you were starting an engine, and that wakes everything up. So right now the truck is stationary. It is locked down with the parking brake. The shifter's in neutral. We have a little bit different situation. Notice there's no shifter on here versus a regular car. We have a selector. This simply chooses which direction the motor is going to spin. Uh, right now you can see it's lit up in neutral, drive, reverse. Uh, it has no park function in the motor itself, so we have an electric parking brake. I'm going to place my foot on the brake to hold the vehicle still and release the parking brake. You can hear the motors disengage. Now we're in neutral. We're going to choose. I know I have a little bit of stuff in front of the truck, so I'm going to back out of here, choose reverse, and slowly give it throttle. Choose drive and pull away. And that's it. The transmission doesn't actually shift. The motor is always engaged with gears. The motor just switches directions. So it's like a big radio control car, if you will. So you just choose what direction and how fast the motor spins. And your throttle is like squeezing the trigger on a radio control car controller. You notice there's a little bit different sounds here and there versus a gasoline powered car. A lot of the stuff that a gasoline engine would normally run have been replaced with something that runs electrically, whether it be 12 volt or 400 volt. You have your power steering. You can hear a little bit of power steering sound out of that's at a hydraulic electric pump. Uh, you have a vacuum pump for the brakes. You have some electric water pumps for the cooling systems. There's two cooling systems on this truck. Uh, those you cannot hear. Um, you will occasionally hear the air suspension compressor operating as it adjusts itself a little bit and moves and adjusts the height of the truck. And besides that, it's into options that the, the uh, owner has opted for in their vehicle. All right, so we covered moving, now let's cover stopping and shutting down. So we back into a parking space, the vehicle's still in reverse. We're gonna go ahead and select neutral. So now we'll long or push. We will engage the parking brake and wait for the indicator light that the parking brake is engaged. And you will simply turn off your key. Now the vehicle is locked down, it is shut off, and it's ready for sitting. So underneath the hood, you'll notice it looks a little bit different. You don't have your normal engine. This is about 60% of the batteries for the truck. The other 40% is in the load area in the rear of the vehicle. So you still have fluids, you still have a couple of maintenance points, but you don't have oil changes, you don't have filters, you don't have anything like that. You have your tool cooling system reservoirs. This one's for the battery. This one's for the electric motor. You still have a normal braking system with brake fluid. And in the back, you have the power steering reservoir on the pump back there. Uh, this has, let's see, it's 16 Tesla modules in total for 100 kilowatt hours between both the packs. There is 16 Tesla modules in this box and the remaining are in the rear box. Range right now, uh, we're still in testing, but it should be somewhere around the 200 mile range. Um, acceleration is strong, to say the least. Uh, Off-road ability, there is no transfer case anymore. There's no high gear, low gear. With the electrics, they do extremely well in the low end torque because you have all the motors torque available from zero RPMs. So they're still fantastic off-road as well. <laughs> So 
So let's talk about the drive unit on the Tesla vehicles. So we use a rear motor out of a Tesla Model S or Model X. Uh, normally in those vehicles, it sits sideways and powers the rear wheels directly. Uh, for our application and to remain, to keep the all-wheel drive, the motor's turned 90 degrees, it is re-geared, and now it spins drive shafts going to the front and rear axle instead of half shafts going to the tires. It is mounted midship where the transfer case normally would be and the transmission and things like that. So with the battery packs themselves, the front one is standard among the vehicles. The rear one varies based on if the customer is going to have seating or if they are going to have a cargo area. The rear battery pack is here. This customer opted for a covering in teeth uh, with some basic cushions and things like that. Uh, if you're having a cargo area, this will just be a flat area. He opted to have a, a custom storage box put back here. If you have seating, you will have two forward-facing Land Rover fold and tumble jump seats that will be in this area here, approximately the same place they would be if the truck had them anyways. All right, let's talk about charging our Tesla-powered vehicles. Uh, we equip the vehicles with a standard J1772 socket, which is the same as uh, any uh, electric filling station, charging station at uh, anywhere across the US. The onboard charger is a 6.6 .6 kilowatt uh, charging unit uh, that is at 220 volts uh, charging from the wall. All right, so enough talk about batteries and technicals. Let's get to the fun part. Let's check out a zero to 60 in this vehicle. So that is the short and quick on our Tesla powered Defender. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed as much as I enjoyed making it. I'll talk to you soon. Uh -huh.